Hello everyone, my name is Blaystar and welcome to another video. With the arrival of Guild Wars 2 Path of Fire expansion in the 22nd of September, I thought why not do a different video this time and share my own personal opinion on why people play and should play Guild Wars 2. First and foremost, let's just put this out there. Guild Wars 2 is a top quality game regardless of the reasons people like or dislike the game. It came out in 2012 and set to do things its own way. And that's one of the reasons I believe people play Guild Wars 2. Identity. ArenaNet did it in the past when they launched Guild Wars 1, their first game as a company and one of the most successful MMORPGs with a gameplay and business model akin to no other, and this is the buy to play model I mean. With Guild Wars 2 they furthered that path in many ways, they changed how questing works, added an action based combat that incites active gameplay, removed needless competition over the collection of resources, implemented an yet to be rivaled inventory management and skin system, allowed for downscale in lower level zones, they eliminated Geared Treadmill and the Holy Trinity among also many other things. Hell, the company went ahead with the idea of a living breathing world, to the point of actually destroying their world zones and rebuilding them again, and players had just to deal with it, that's, that's their vision. Just go check what Land's Arch looked like when it started and what it looks like now. It was their vision for Gloss 2, and despite it not having the outcome they desired, I still argue that they were doing something ahead of their time, for them as a company and for MMORPG gamers in general. If they manage to keep the pace of, let's say, the theme park content that they are developing nowadays, but also had a separate team working on permanently scarring their world only, I believe we would be witnessing something even more extraordinary than we already are. A second aspect I believe that makes people play this game is its combat and gameplay. If you remember, I earlier said Guild Wars 2 parted away with the holy trinity of tanking, spanking and healing. It's true, there are no conventional healers and tankers. ArenaNet wanted a more active and action based gameplay where dodging and positioning were more relevant in order to thrive in boss fights. To which you would reply as bullshit, it was all, all about line of sight stacking and spanking and I didn't even have to dodge anything. To which I would reply, you were certainly correct for the majority of fights at launch. Still don't let your historical memories of when you played Guild Wars 2 taint your eyes and believe me for a second, or the reminder of the video. The gameplay has changed, a lot, there is still no art trinity, don't get me wrong, but you are now actually capable of healing, so if you are one of those people, now is the time to come back and heal your friends. Fight wise, the game is nothing like it was at launch either and the months after it. Bosses now have well defined mechanics and players have to do them and cooperate with each other in order to beat them. For some cases there are even hard modes for bosses which make the fights a lot harder and complicated, requiring people to cooperate even more between themselves. We have now raids, they were introduced with a total of 13 bosses up till now and they also have legendary armor which is the best armor in the game you can get which really nice perks to them. Uh, you have Fract of the Mist, they were revamped and are in the best state ever, with the new fractals being added now, there's new open world event and bosses that actually now require people to gather efforts and be organized in order to kill the bosses, you don't just stack on top of each other and spam your only one skill to kill them, you can actually have to do other stuff now. And as an example of this is the Dragon Stand event which takes place in a full map with people split into three lanes converging in the end to fight the final boss, it makes you feel great for being part of an army, going full on against a great threat, so this is what things have changed in Guild Wars 2, what the events are now and the, the way they are paving uh, for the future, so it looks really promising. If you are more of a PvP person at it, for arena type PvP, it now comes with new modes, PvP seasons are always ongoing, there are daily and monthly automatic tournaments that can get you awesome and exclusive rewards, such as a statue that everyone will look upon. The mode now feels equally rewarding to PvE, since you can get a lot more gold and items that you could only get from PvE before. Balance pets have become frequent in order to try and make the meta refreshing and nerf those overpower classes you ate, but you still don't play because you know you are a lot better than that. And despite the competitive scene dwindling in the past months, 
The PvP community is still going strong, and the reason is mainly because the combat is fun and it's one of the best due to its unique action-based style. There's nothing like it at the moment and that's really refreshing to play a PvP like uh, Guild Wars. Concerning World vs World where 3 servers fight for control, there have also been a ton of changes. A new map was added with the first expansion, rewards have also been improved a lot with exclusive items like armors, weapons, among other stuff, to the point it is now well balanced when compared to the other game modes. Attackers and defenders have now more options to wreck their enemies and achieve their goals. You can even glide now, changing the pace of the game and strategy each side can employ. I'll be honest with you, I'm not much of a world vs world person, it's not that it isn't good, it's just not my style. But even I have joined world vs world more now than ever, and while I don't spend much time there, it actually feels like its community has kind of resurrected and maps are all full again. Despite it not being my thing, it's the best it's ever been, I have to acknowledge that at least. Another aspect I believe that makes people play Guild Wars 2 is the series world and lore. The Guild Wars series starts in 2005, which means Guild Wars 2 has now 12 years of lore behind him. In that time, 4 games were released as part of the original series, 3 book novels and 3 games under the Guild Wars 2 name if we count the soon-to-be-released expansion Path of Fire. If we look back at the last decade of Western MMORPGs that introduced their lore for the first time alongside the game itself, in the end they never were that much successful, usually because people don't bother reading the quest text, but also because the world is left in second plan when compared to the gameplay. Sure, the gameplay needs to be good if the company wants to even have a chance, but if the game lacks a world or context, in the long run it will start to feel lackluster and players are, and that players are only playing for the numbers and nothing else fools their immersion in the game. Look for examples of games that were quite successful with this approach. World of Warcraft had already established lore through the Warcraft series, Star Wars Galaxies had the Star Wars universe behind its back, any Final Fantasy game is always rich in lore, and so Final Fantasy XIV benefited from this after its revival. Lord of the Rings and Middle-earth, Elder Scrolls Online, EVE, among other games. Of course there are also examples on the not so much successful side. We can have the examples of Warhammer Online, Star Trek Online, and maybe even Star Wars The Old Republic, considering the expectations people had for the for this game, but the reason for these games is not the lore and setting, but more like the decisions taken for them. Since the start, ArenaNet always knew that story would be a big part of Guild Wars 2. With the vanilla game they put out the personal story, but it wasn't enough for them. Story wasn't a second plan thing, therefore they implemented the Living World seasons. These are episodes of story akin to a TV show that are released regularly between expansions setting up the story for the next one. So far we've had three seasons leading up to the released expansions, and for someone that cares deeply about this world's lore, it just feels great. Being there with those once great characters and the new ones in order to further the story, exploring new maps that are released, hell, we got to explore six new maps this last season, it was great, revisiting old zones and see how they change, any ones that we have never been to. And the truth is, Living World is in a great state too, ArenaNet finally got the grasp of it and it reflects on the quality of the story. Sure, it still has its flaws and some episodes feel better than others, but overall the quality has improved very much. And the truth is, I believe ArenaNet acknowledged this when they created a story-driven game like Guild Wars 1, in order to pave the way for world and lore building, and now Guild Wars 2 reaps what was sown back then. Its world has relevance, its old characters are seen with a nostalgic look and we see the new ones develop while we play with them. The world is beautifully crafted and very pleasing aesthetically. Just you do some of the maps, ambience and scale and see what they look like for yourself. They all have different feels between them and reflect the context of each zone. The game is expanding its lore while not forgetting the past and that is not something as common as one might think in MMORPGs. The truth is, they treat their world as if it was their main hero, and in my opinion, that's how it should be. Now, enough of talking about what was and is, and more of what will this expansion bring for the future. The expansion takes place in Alona, land of the golden sun. <sighs> 
Okay, back to Earth. Elona is one of the richest lore regions in Tyria and was the setting for a Guild Wars Nightfall campaign. The region will launch with 5 maps bigger than any other map created before, though new maps will much likely come with the release of the Living World episodes. These maps will display the usual dynamic events, adventures, jumping puzzles, but also new world bosses and meta events, new enemies with new mechanics and ways of fighting them. We will have also bounties which you can take to go on specific monsters, and some surprises we don't know yet surely are to come. Path of Fire will also bring mounts. For the very first time in the history of the series they are being added to the game. But don't fool yourself thinking this will be a speed boost like all other MMOs. No no, the game will launch with 4 mounts only, and each will have their own movement ability. This will make them excel at different things, for example, the raptor is great for long distance leaps, the jackal will be great to teleport short distance, the springer can jump really high and the skimmer can over the ground, making him great for water and quicksand areas. They will be a critical part of exploring the new maps as these will be tailored for each mount ability, which really enforce the aspect of being more than a movement speed modifier. And the best thing is that you will even be able to use them in the rest of the world. You can bring them to the Corteria and to Art of Thorns map and play with your mount there, so it's gonna be really cool to explore those zones now with the mounts. Uh, for the future, new mounts can be expected really, with new abilities and they are likely to be released when the Living World episodes come right after the expansion hits. And finally, the mounts are another perfect example of what I meant before and talked about, identity. ArenaNet looked to defy the common things that MMOs have done all this time with mounts and they, I think, truly, they did it. The last feature is the new Elite Specializations. Guild Wars 2 launched with 9 professions, the first expansion allowed for each profession to specialize in a new one and the second expansion will do more of the same. This implies new weapons to be used, new skills, new traits, Seriously, all in all, this represents more build depth in order to give players a gameplay diversity with the professions they enjoy playing, and this even gives a chance for players to try other classes that they didn't enjoy as much. Now you are thinking, just this? Nothing new for PvP or in World vs World, no raids or fractals? And the answer is yes and no. All this content and more will keep coming while people are playing the just released expansion. They had teams working on other stuff while the expansion team was doing its thing, and this means other content was not affected by the expansion development, it will come when it's ready. It will be a nice space of content between Living World, Fractals, Raids, PvP, World vs World and other stuff that we haven't even heard yet. Best thing is that some of this content is likely to not even be tied to the expansion, such as PvP, World vs World and Fractal Dungeons, so you will be able to play it without the expansion. It's a great game and a great time to play it. If you are looking for one of the greatest MMOs ever that doesn't force you to pay every month, that respects your time and you can play at your own pace without ever feeling being left behind, this is the right game for you. Guild Wars 2 is free to play, seriously, what is stopping you from trying? With this I'm out of here. Thanks for watching guys and hopefully I've sparked something in your mind.